There's no magic program. There's no pill that's going to get you in shape. You, your hard work and your commitment, your consistency is what is going to get you there. Hello and welcome to The Core Podcast. We're your hosts, Alina Keller and Shannon Paulson. I'm a Precision Nutrition Certified Coach. And I'm a NASM Certified Personal Trainer for over 13 years. We support women 30 years old and over to pursue health through realistic nutrition and fitness strategies. Our main passion is to help you find that smile when you look in the mirror, find freedom when you eat, and joy when moving your body. Make sure to subscribe for your weekly dose of doable health tips, practical advice, and so much more. It's the health education you wish you'd have. Today, we are talking about consistency. Shannon's going to bring us, you know, what is this? How do we do it? How do we get better at it? And why should we do it? So let's take it away. Let's talk about consistency. Yeah, I love that intro because how do you get better at it? How do you get better at consistency? I mean, we all know that consistency is key, but how do we progress and make sure that it's always in our life every day? Um, So I'm going to chat about all of that and a little bit more. We'll go over a few tacks and um, just some key points to keep in mind as you um, create consistency in your life. All right. So let's say that you go to the gym today and you complete a great workout. You go home, you look in the mirror and you see no results. So you go back to the gym tomorrow, you complete another great workout, you go home, you look in the mirror again, and you still see no results. You repeat this for a few more days to a few more weeks, coming home, looking in the mirror, trying on your favorite jeans to still see and feel little to no results. So you quit. So what you did in the gym in such a small amount of time was unmeasurable to you. And rightfully so. Even if you went to the gym for a few weeks, those results could not be measured quite yet. So you quit. And this is actually why a lot of people quit. They work so hard for those few weeks to few months. They see no results or not the results that they wanted. And then they're done. They throw in the towel. So when it comes to your fitness journey and honestly, any other area in your health the journey, you have to fundamentally believe that fitness, that exercise, that movement is the right course of action for you. You have to commit to moving your body. You have to commit to yourself that the health routine you are creating is going to work for you. You're not just doing it because Lisa and Human Resources does it or your next door neighbor, Jan, started and she's starting to see results. So this is just what you need to do. You need to commit and fundamentally believe that this route is going to work for you. You have to understand that your fitness journey is trial and error. What worked for you a year ago, even a month ago, maybe even yesterday, may not work for you today because we are always evolving and we are always changing. And ladies, we have a monthly cycle that we have to keep in mind. You have to work hard every single day, even on the days that you're tired, you're hungry, moody, unmotivated, or feel as though you have a lack of time. Yes, you will quote unquote screw up. You will overeat on chocolate cake for three days in a row because it was a family member's birthday and it's gleefully staring at you on the counter. You'll miss days at the gym for various reasons. Your emotions will get the best of you because you are a human navigating this world. But if you create a realistic routine where fitness sessions are the business meetings to yourself and you stick with your routine consistently, Again, regardless of what life throws at you, you will achieve goals and you will create lifelong fitness habits that stick and you will achieve greatness. There is absolutely no trick. There's no magic program. There's no 
hill that's going to get you in shape. You, your hard work and your commitment, your consistency is what is going to get you there. So going to the gym for two hours a day will not get you in shape. Working out for 20 minutes every day, regardless of your intensity, will get you in shape. It's not about what the person next to you in the gym does, what your neighbor does, what your best friend's aunt does. It's all about you, your journey, and your consistency. Beating yourself up through exercise because you ate, quote unquote, a bad meal will not keep you in shape. But moving your body at any capacity, even if it's for 10 minutes every single day, is what will keep you in shape. Creating time within your schedule to complete longer durations of exercise when you can will accommodate those days where you have less time and are unable to complete a full duration, maybe just that 10 minute session. So getting in shape and remaining in shape is all about consistency of your hard work and your commitment. Again, regardless of your intensity or your duration, you're consistent with it every single day day. Consistency is your true partner when it comes to establishing a new habit that works with your lifestyle. I've had many conversations with individuals that exercise for a few months because there is a certain event coming up. Then once that event is over, the exercise sessions end. For some people, it's signing up for a 21-day fixed challenge. They'll eat super healthy for 21 days to resist, to reset their system. And hopefully during that time, you've gained everything that the program promised, plus establish this new eating program. But what happens on day 22, day 92? Can you imagine the powerful goals these individuals would have accomplished by now if they had kept going? after that special event or after that six week boot camp challenge they signed up for. And as a side note, I know some individuals do remain consistent and these programs are a way to kickstart their journey, but that number is very low. About 5% of people that sign up for these challenges or, or do these 21 day fixes, only about 5% of them continue on and are successful long-term. And long-term, if you need to go back to the different action and maintenance phases is about nine months. So they've maintained these challenges or these programs for nine or more months. So I am chatting to those other 95% of individuals that are not creating realistic habits that work with their lifestyle. Avoid getting consistency and motivation mixed up because motivation will come and go. But even on your non-motivated days, you must remain consistent. You have to be focused on your end results. So let's chat about the next few items to keep in mind when creating a realistic, attainable, and consistent routine that will fit you and only you. So the first item is Focus on your end result. This means being realistic and timely with smaller goals to help you reach success. So in this big ticket item, here are two smaller variables to keep in mind when creating what your end result will look like. When it comes to fitness, what does it look like for you? What does fitness look like for you? Will you be going to a gym? If so, would a larger gym fit you or a smaller, more intimate setting fit you? Will you exercise from home? If so, what space within your home will accommodate your desire to want to be in that space? Do you want it to be light? Do you want it to be dark? Can you hang up motivating quotes? Can you play music within this space? Will you create a buddy system to stay accountable? If so, what trustworthy friend will be the best fit for you? How will you ask her? What boundaries will you set with each other? Will you hire a personal trainer? If so, will it be a male or a female? Will you go to them or will the trainer come to you? 
what's your price point when it comes to a gym? What's your price point when it comes to a personal trainer? And how often do you need to see them? And of course, if you do hire a personal trainer, those trainers will help guide you through all of those particular questions as far as how often you should be visiting with them. Will you join an online program that includes maybe a support group that's guided? If so, does this online program fit your current physical activity level? An example is this. You don't want to join a boot camp program if you've never exercised before. What type of personalities do you want to be surrounded by? Do you want to be surrounded by high energy people or more peaceful, uplifting individuals? Will you join a program that's guided enough to keep your attention and to keep you safe during the exercises when they're performed on your own? You need to visualize what a fitness setting looks like for you. What setting is going to help you be consistent even on your most unmotivating days? Then we'll move on to the next step, which is what will your fitness schedule look like? Are you a morning person? Is it feasible to wake up 10 minutes earlier three days a week? Or are you a night owl? Is it feasible for you to exercise after work or after dinner? How busy are most of your days? Can you squeeze in a session during your lunch break? Is it feasible to complete 15 minutes of exercise then eat lunch before needing to go back to work? For me, just giving out an example, I am not a night owl. I schedule my exercise sessions to be completed at or before 3 p.m. Ever since ninth grade, I always went for a run after school, so around 3.30 p.m. I entered a darker time in my life when I was 18 and 19 where I did not exercise. And again, that's a solid reminder that life happens. Shit happens. Sometimes dark chapters in our life last longer than you anticipate. But always remember how important it is to get back on track once your body is ready and able. Once I turned 20, I got right back into my 3 p.m. exercise routine, and I've had the same exercise schedule ever since. Now, it's not because my day just allows me to be able to exercise at 3 p.m. It's because I schedule my day around that 3 p.m. business meeting. I'm not going to schedule a client at 3 when that's my business meeting to myself. That's my most important meeting of the day. And I've really been fortunate to find a routine that really truly works for me. Because once 4 to 5 p.m. hits, my mental, creative, and physical parts of me are checking out. I'm done for the day. And I'm fully aware of this when it comes to my energy levels. So you need to create a schedule that works for you. Don't push this variable. Don't don't think of it as less than, and it's something that you can trial and error about, but really take this variable important. If you are not a morning person and you hate running, don't make it a goal to go running in the morning, at least not right away. Set yourself up for success in a realistic and attainable way that, again, fits your lifestyle, your energy needs, and your energy levels, and also what you enjoy. All right, the second big ticket item here is starting slow and simple. This means you're not trying to completely change your life in one day. It is easy to get over motivated and take on too much. If you want to read each day, work towards establishing a habit of reading three times a week, then slowly build up from there and make it a daily routine. If you make it a daily routine, your habit is more likely to stick. If you want to start exercising, going to the gym every day may not work as you're starting out slow and simple. You will probably overload your system too fast and too soon. However, if the days you are not going to the gym, you go for a walk or do some light stretching, your mind will actively take that as exercising, leading you into the habit of more movement. So if you're starting out, you go to the gym two or three times a week, Those other two to three days throughout the week, go for a walk. You are creating that habit of more movement. Consistency, focusing in on your end result, starting out slow and simple, and working on a new routine every single day. Sounds easy, 
right? That's all you need to do, but it's not. And I get it. I definitely get that focusing in on that end result, really trying to be consistent every day is not so easy because we live in a very fast paced world. There's a lot of outside noise. There's a lot of stigma of what you should be doing, what you shouldn't be doing. The confusion is real. Now think of it this way. If all those diet pills worked as they claim, then all of this would be easy. But unfortunately, there are no magic pills. It takes hard work and a few bumps, if not a lot, along the way. So before we depart, I just want you to remember this. It's okay to be imperfect. Imperfect action is better than no action at all. If you're not seeing results right away, keep going. Don't expect all of your attempts to be successful. Don't expect those immediate immediate results. Try your best and remember to just remain consistent. I love this. And a few things were crossing my mind while you were talking about this. One of them is that, you know, we, we talk a lot about how these short things like 21 days or six weeks or 90 days, whatever it is that, you know, they backfire for most people, but yes, there are people that use this as a stepping stone, me being one of them. Um, that's how I started. I had no idea what to do, what I was doing. So I bought into a, a program and, you know, I did it, but that was really, um, you know, it was a catalyst for me to start and to do something. And I got away from that. I, I no longer do that. But in my case, it really was a, a stepping stone. That being said, it really is. We, we use this a lot as a word of caution because the hundreds of people that I interacted with doing this same program that I did, most of them did not move the needle. Most of them are repeating program after program without actually getting where they want to get. So that's the balance that you really have to try to find is that, you know, you can use things kind of as a stepping stone, as a, as a start, but you just need to pay attention for yourself is, am I using this as an excuse to just say the same and say that I'm doing something? <laughs> or am I actually using this as a way to move forward and improve and reach whatever goal I have? So that was an important note that, you know, yes, think anything can work for somebody. It's just a matter of what are you going to do with that? Are you going to take that and learn from it? Or right. are you going to use it for one event, for one party, for one vacation, mm -hmm. and then just drop it. Right. So I think that was a, a really, really good point. And the other point I loved was about motivation. And uh, if you've heard me long enough, or if you're one of my clients, you've heard me say that motivation is crap because motivation doesn't take you anywhere. Right. Which is exactly what you were talking about. It's, it's the habits that are going to sustain you because um, the figure that I give to people a lot is how many times are you motivated to brush your teeth? I'm never motivated to brush my teeth. <laughs> it's just something that I do because, you know, oral health, the general health right. is important. So you brush your teeth, right? But I'm not like, well, do I get to brush my teeth now? That's not, that's not a thing. <laughs> and the same thing goes for the rest. Like you're not always going to be motivated to get in a workout or to make a good nutrition decision or to go to bed and sleep enough hours, right? Motivation is going to fail you, but the consistency is is there so that you create a habit and you don't have to work so hard at doing it anymore right like you can you can fall back on the habit and just see the results of being consistent with it and yeah that's amazing yeah i love it all very good points and feedback from that i love it yes all all so good all right, so tune in next week because we have a really practical nutrition podcast coming for you. It is a eating strategy. If you have ever downloaded a list of what to eat, what not to eat, if you have ever gone to a health practitioner or to a nutritionist or to um, a coach that has given you a list of foods of what you can and cannot eat, 
you probably reached a conclusion after a while that you can't, couldn't really do that. It didn't include some of the foods you liked. It included some foods that you don't. And so, you know, what do you do about this? So this is called the stoplight strategy, and we're going to talk about it next week. You do not want to miss it. Ooh, I like this one. <laughs> yeah, Shannon knows this one. She likes this one. Yes, so good. don't miss it. We will see you next week.